So we've talked about problems with content-based filtering. What about IP blacklists? Well, first, the way an IP blacklist works is that when a sender sends an email to the receiver, the receiver sends a query for that IP address to a blacklist, or a DNS-based blacklist, sometimes called a DNSBL, such as Spam House. Depending on whether or not that IP address appears in the blacklist, the receiver can then decide to accept the message, or if the IP address turns out to be on the blacklist, the receiver can decide to terminate the connection and not even accept the mail in the first place, thereby saving the operator the trouble of even having to store the message. The third approach is to filter a message on how it is sent. In particular, we can look at such features as the geographic locations of the sender and receiver, the set of target recipients, the sender's upstream ISP, or our inference as to whether the sender is a member of a botnet or a network of compromised hosts that are doing the bidding of some command and control server. Now, the challenges of building a filter around this notion is, first, understanding network-level behavior, and second, building classifiers using network-level features to execute the filtering.